Today, I'd like to talk about six things that you need to know before you move to Minnesota. Let's take a look at this. All right, if you randomly clicked on some links on the internet and just stumbled into this channel, quick disclaimer, my name is Chris Mosier. I am the team leader of the Twin Cities Minnesota Living Team. I, along with my team, have been faithfully serving the entire Twin Cities Metro for 16 years with a particular focus in the South Metro. Regardless of what brought you here, regardless of what you or your family's needs might be, I hope you find this content useful. And if you would like to know more directly or to assess your exact situation, shoot me a message, schedule a Zoom call just like this, or drop me a message in the actual YouTube and I will do my part to get back to you. Now, let's talk about this. So I've said in other videos, and I'm gonna keep leaning into it, being non-native, although really, can you claim you're non-native when you've been here for like 30 years? I don't know. But not originally being born in Minnesota, I like to think it gives me a perspective that I can give to each of you about things that you might not necessarily be prepared for or that are a bit of some of the culture shock, maybe just culture adjustment you'll have if you're moving or relocating here from outside the Minnesota area. There is a lot of cool stuff we're gonna cover in this video, so let's get started. All right, the first thing you need to know some of the stereotypes are absolutely true. And I, I mean positive stereotypes. We are known as the land of 10,000 lakes. Wow, really? And I like to joke that that is an underestimate. I literally think you could drop your pin just about anywhere in the state and drive 15 minutes in either direction and you'll either come near to or drive into a lake. There are a ton of bodies of water out here, and the Minnesota DNR really does a fantastic job making sure that the lakeshore and the wildlife and the wetlands are all preserved, not just from the perspective of trying to keep Minnesota blue and green in that context, but there are very specific rules around where homes can be built in relation to said wetlands that really gives people kind of the best of all worlds. You don't really see uh, nature being just knocked down left and right and especially as it comes to our native wetlands like I said you aren't allowed to build too close to shore you have to have a certain amount of free acreage near it that's available so that it doesn't overtake what you've taken away that really does lend to some really cool landscapes um, in particular the reference I'm going to give is getting a little bit dated, but if you remember the Prairie Home Companion show on National Public Radio, you know, for me growing up at the first early stage of my life in Chicago, before I moved over here, it really sort of painted this whimsical picture of Minnesota. And I'd like to believe as it relates to a lot of what we have with nature and some of the lore around Minnesota in particular, that they've lived up to that. Coming to you live from the World Theater here in downtown. Lake Wobegon might be made up. It might not actually exist. But if you go to places like Malacca, if you go to places like Bemidji, Duluth, you get out at a cabin in the woods, out on the water, where there's maybe the couple of small town restaurants in town or the local bar, it really does feel like you're up north in this just sort of magical area. And even as locals, everybody here loves that. And it's really amazing if you've never experienced it and you come to visit or you come to relocate here for the first couple times. Because of those lakes, cabin life is a real thing out here. In fact, there's quite a few Minnesotans who have their primary residence and then they are within, I'd say on average, it's probably two to three hours is kind of the sweet spot, especially if you got kids and you're trying to balance time over the summer, but they'll have the cabin, you know, northeast, northwest, due north. And that can, again, really give you a chance to live in what is sort of the idyllic summertime and uh, late spring Minnesota. And really, for the rest of us that are here, you know, it ends up being one of those things where our winters can be so brutal at times. I don't shy away from it if you've watched any other videos on this channel. But the ability to really be present with and enjoy all that the warmer weather has to offer, 
It's why we put up with it. I travel at least two, sometimes as much as three months in total out of the year. And add it up throughout the year, I probably hit MSP airport to and from a combined total of 20 to 30 times. And I can tell you, having been to many of our domestic airports, many international airports, MSP is probably my favorite. No exaggeration. What I find particularly engrossing and engaging about it is just the simplicity. It's very clean. It has organic snacks at some of the locations. It's very easy to traverse. It's well laid out. And for the most part, I will, I will say I have a particular affinity to Terminal 1, but even Terminal 2, it's very simple to get around. You can take a tram to go between the two terminals if you end up at one, but you have to leave out of the other or come back. And in general, it's just, you feel very safe. It's very open, it's very bright. And I find that it's just very simple to navigate. On the other hand, you know, getting in and out of Newark in New York, uh, or technically Jersey. Uh, some of the other places I've been, they're just, they're not as well preserved. You've got to have long treks to and from. But then the other piece you have to take into account is that it's not really that convenient at some airports. Whereas MSP, there tends to be a good range of flights leaving at reasonable times at relatively reasonable prices, seven days a week. And that makes travel very simple. For the most part too, if you're, you know, around the Twin Cities, I'd say anywhere within 30 minutes of Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, it's pretty easy to get in and out of. I've had to commute in and out of New York and Boston, like even on the tail ends of rush hour. And I've actually missed flights before because it gets so burdened with traffic. You can't get to the airport on time. Not the case with MSP. For the most part, our traffic out here is a lot less and it makes getting in and out of the airports pretty simple as well. And that makes that work-life balance some of us are seeking, that maybe you don't get everything you want in the state you live in, but it gives you the easy opportunity to travel, that can make a difference. Third thing we need to know, I did not make this up, I'm gonna read it because I'm gonna get it wrong. We have, in Minneapolis, the most green space per capita. It is 105,843 square feet. You know I didn't make that up because why would I be so specific? That is a huge draw to Minneapolis and the Twin Cities in general. We have so many walking paths, we have bike trails, um, and I think it's a series of cities that have really woven the landscape of our green space into the city itself. And that really helps you to feel like you're never too far from nature. And I'd say that's, again, that's kind of my thing being out here, is no matter where you're at, even in the Twin Cities, even in Minneapolis proper, you can find a park, you can find some green space, you can drive outside of the city and within 10 minutes, you're in a suburb with a forest or a park or trail. Um, I've talked about before, my two favorite are probably um, Jay Cook State Park up in Duluth, if you really wanted to head north, but then right in our backyard of South Metro, there's Lebanon Hills State Park and that's amazing. And they're all very easy, they're free, they're accessible. You know, what we may lack in elevation mountains, we more than make up with this amazing set of green space. Point number four, our mall culture. Now listen, we're not gonna have these big open outdoor malls all over the place like you will in places like Florida, California. And we've had quite a few of the lower end ones shutter in a post COVID, post Amazon world, but we still have some really nice ones to choose from. There's a bunch of cool outlet malls scattered in both Albertville, Egan, that are you know semi outdoors. But I think you've also got like the Galleria in Edina, you've got the Minnetonka malls, you've even got one in Roseville that kind of take what you would still go into an actual retail space to purchase. And then they flank a bunch of businesses and a bunch of restaurants around them. And it makes it very accessible. It feels like you're having a night on the town because not everybody wants to always go into Minneapolis St. Paul for those that are more residential suburban driven. I in particular am absolutely in love with Baldemar Steakhouse that is right outside of the Roseville Mall. I love that place and knowing that I can easily commute into it without having to go into a downtown area is a huge perk. And again, we have the Mall of America that's always there, that's always a draw, but I want to kind of highlight everything else around it because MOA is obvious. Point number five, Midwest slang. Okay, this is a real thing. Disclaimer, 
it's not as bad or as pronounced as you've seen on either the show or the movie Fargo. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. While parts of Minnesota, as you get further north, are Canada adjacent, there definitely is some culture that sort of blends together. I have heard people all the way up along the, the Iron Trail and near the North Shore that have like a very pronounced Canadian sort of drawl to them. But even then, you're not really hearing the, oh, don't you know, but you will hear some you betchas. And it's really pronounced on the O's. So like, bolt, you'll hear that stuff like crazy. I, I honestly can't fake it as hard. I've got a little bit of it after all the time here, but you know, I think it's part of the charm. I think it's part of what keeps Minnesota conversation sounding so friendly and being so courteous. But again, know that the stereotypes are like 40% true and you are going to hear it. And eventually, as you can probably hear in part of my accent, it's gonna wear off on you. Nothing like a good oop <laughs> to get you in the mood. Last but not least, point number six, we are a thriving business community. There are a lot of big companies, Fortune 500 corporations have been here. I get into greater detail on this on one of my Minnesota Minneapolis videos, but broad strokes, we've got Best Buy, we've got Target, General Mills, Stryker Medical, the list goes on. And not only are there plenty of opportunities that come through those companies that then lead to us having consistently low unemployment, like I'm talking under 3% almost all of the time here in Minnesota, but it's also a really good place for entrepreneurs because our healthcare, our cost of living can really allow a lot of business owners to set up shop and be successful here. So I think that's another reason that like Minnesota can really stand out and is a good haven for people trying to really blend all the aspects of why you choose a place to live. All right, guys. Well, that is it for today. Thank you for tuning in once again. As I've said before, if you find this content helpful, my aim is to be a resource, to have our team be your go-to for all things Minnesota, all things Twin Cities. You know, like I said, as you're watching this video, just imagine you're on the other end of it. We can very easily set up a 15 minute little chat, go over your specific scenario for your family and kind of give you the pros and cons of the different areas and really break it down. Um, we're happy to help. If there is anything you did not hear covered in this, if you have questions, if you really have a strong opinion about some of the stereotypes I spoke about, well, leave me a comment. Let's see what you got to say, mysterious internet keyboard warrior. But if nothing else, thank you very much for being a part of this. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. And I look forward to catching you guys at the next one. See you again.